So I wonder when Robert Sala told you that he wanted to uh, demote Nathaniel Hackett if you supported that decision. Oh, that's right, you didn't. I have totally forgot how things played out here. Aaron Rodgers is a duplicitous liar. Unfortunately, great quarterback, but he's not a guy that you can believe when he opens his mouth and he starts talking. So I went back in the annals yesterday because I was I was trying to remember how do we ever experience anything like this with Aaron Rodgers prior to him coming to New York and being the Jet quarterback. Because remember, he said the other day, I don't have that much power here. I have no say in personnel or in coaches being fired. I'm merely one of 53. I'm just another guy in the locker room. Well, I'm going to go back a couple years, if you allow me to. 2021. Oh, it's another year. Another year of speculation. Is Aaron coming back? Is he going to retire? Is he going to go somewhere else? And he was upset with the Kunst and Mark Murphy, the two guys that essentially run the Packer franchise. And he had a press conference. So let's go back in time and see how upset he was about why they wouldn't let him participate in their decisions to bring players in. So you're telling me that in 2021, he was very upset with the Green Bay Packers front office because nobody consulted with him on either bringing in free agents or on signing, again, a nondescript wide receiver who had a pretty good training camp. But he wasn't interested in having his voice heard about replacing a head coach. This is the nonsense with this guy. Great quarterback, first bout Hall of Famer, best quarterback my franchise has ever had, on paper at least. But you can't continually lie to me because that's what you do. So when you open your mouth and you talk about I'm one of 53 and I didn't see it coming and I'm depressed and I miss playing catch with his son, it's garbage. You're a liar. Yeah, and at the end of the day, like, I, it's kind of like what we've heard some of the guy or Dak Prescott say about Jerry Jones. You know, I'm not, I don't really. Stop I, listening. I stopped listening. Yeah. At some point, you, you just, you're going to stop listening to Aaron Rodgers or you're going to listen to all these things and try to maneuver what he means by some of the things that he's saying. At the end of the day, what needs to happen for the New York Jets is he needs to play better. Yes. Yes. Thank Period. You. Stop. In the mm -hmm. words of, yeah. of Craig. Thank you. Like, if he doesn't play better, this idea of this team being a contender is not real. It's, it's unrealistic. Agreed. In, in your eyes, it's always been unrealistic. <laughs> right. And yeah, I was sold you. the bill of goods <laughs> yeah. because I know what he's capable of if he's able to get back to that level of play. By the way, he just, showed you I. I was just, I mean, trust me, he did it to my team for two decades. Yeah. I, I, I was just really skeptical that he could do it at 40 coming off of an Achilles injury. Fair. I have plenty of respect for Aaron Rodgers, the football player in the past. Not as much for what he says now. It's just, I don't think he's getting back there. And I'll, I'll just say this. So I lived in Kansas City for seven years. I covered the Chiefs when, when Andy Reid got there. Um, Andy Reid has this long track record of promoting assistant coaches, and they go on to be head coaches in the NFL. And one thing that he does is he's like, you know, Doug Peterson took over play calling duties for me, and then that helped him get a job. You know, Matt, Matt Nagy, he took over play calling duties for me, and then he gets the job. No. If you watch the film of the games where Matt Nagy's calling plays, there's Andy Reid with his play sheet yeah. on the sideline yeah. calling in the plays. Yeah. So, like, let's see. Let, let, let's watch the game closely. Like, I'm not 100% convinced that Nathaniel Hackett is not calling these plays in. I'm not convinced. They're, they're saying it yeah, you know, they'll, publicly, they'll, but you know I'm, not, I'm not convinced. They'll take Hackett. They'll put him upstairs in a luxury I, I box. Sure. He'll call the plays, and then the new guy will be on the sideline doing all the signals and whatnot. Look, the bottom line is what you said. We can take all the other noise out of this. Yeah. If Aaron Rodgers had played better, Salah's not fired, and the Jets are most likely 4-1. and one. The, It's on him. Right. The, thing, the thing that resonated with me with that sound when I listened to it, he said, T, our players want to come here to play with me. <laughs> I go, dude, like, The look on your stop, face. <laughs> stop with that. They want to come play because the Green Bay Packers have a great quarterback. They don't know you. They don't have a relationship with you, sure. right? People wanted to come to Denver – to play with Peyton Manning because Peyton Manning was a great quarterback. Now, he'd get in your ass if you didn't do what we asked you to do. I mean, yeah. he was a hard guy to play with because he was so damn demanding. But they don't know you. They're not going, oh, man, I can't wait. I've always wanted to be friends yeah. with Aaron Rodgers. What Rodgers. a great guy he is. He'll probably right. take me bowling. No, yeah, yeah I mean, that's uh, – so, Bottom I mean, line just get over And yourself. here's me being a desperate, desperate Jet fan. I do believe there are some guys, when you get to a certain level, you got to that level, obviously, as a Packer Hall of Famer. He's been at that level prior to this year 
where all the magnifying glasses are now on you, mm -hmm. right? You have played poorly. You have played well beneath what we know you're capable of playing. It is Monday night football. I would actually be surprised, I don't care who's calling the plays, if Aaron Rodgers doesn't have his best game of the season. Yeah, he's at his best, and you know this better than most, who, <laughs> other than guys who played against him actually in games as a fan of Chicago Bears. Like, when his back's against the wall, he's gonna show when he's out. pressed up against that corner. and it's Old Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, you're right. Old Aaron Rodgers. And, and, and well, that's what we call him. I yeah, 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 that's what he is right now. I've old been a part of old Aaron Rodgers. I just have this thought that, man, it is in there. I'm it sure is it is. in there, even if the it's past. just for Monday night. Right. It is in there I agree. somewhere. And much like what you saw last night, San Francisco in the same exact spot as the Jets. They lost back-to-back -back games. They're two and three. If you win, you're in first place. The script is there. Can number eight deliver it? Yeah, we shall see. Hey, let's get to Parkins picks. You've got uh, your picks. Last yeah, last week you took one on the chin a little bit, didn't you? Okay, yeah, so let's let's address that. A little bit. Yeah, okay. One, little bit, one, one bit. and two last week. We yeah. started paying attention well, to well, Nick's picks well, last well, week. Well, one and two last week, not not great. I'm in full agreement with there. Did of course cover with the Bears. And yes, I lost head to head with Nick Wright in the Niners Cardinals game. But I'm not here to talk about ancient history. That's all the way last week. Because last night, the Niners covered, and who was on the other side of Niners Seahawks? Hmm. Hmm. I'm going to put the reputation of Parkins Picks on tonight's game. That's right. Niners minus three and a half. They will win this game by double digits tonight in Seattle. I think Seattle absolutely can win this game outright. So Seattle plus three and a half. Niners win the game. Uh, 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 my God. So we're back. You're yes. back. We're back. Little, little, little. I hate it. I want you to know this about me. I'm with you winner tie. Well, <laughs> I'm with you winner tie. I'm about you. Don't leave me hanging. All good. Let's get back to the picks. Aberration last week. 10 and 7. I'm seeing the league clearly. I'm crushing Nick Wright. That's not even going to be a question. I will understand that. And Craig, this is yes. going to shock you. Go. I'm going back to the well. I do not understand this line. The Bears are only a one and a half point favorite oh. in London against the Jaguars. Here's something for you. The Jaguars have the worst pass, pass defense in the NFL. Caleb Williams is coming off his best game as a pro. The Bears have allowed 21 or fewer points in 11 straight games, an NFL record. The Jaguars just got to London because they got to stay there for two weeks. The Bears have been there all week, you know, having fish and chips and adjusting to the time zone and all that. The Bears are rested and ready to go. Big win for the Bears in London. A winning streak. You have if picked you them in every right. single I have it, this I year. I've picked them in most. The <laughs> Jags, the Jags players get paid in euros. By the they're way, used to playing in the London. Jags they're going to win this game. game. Yeah, I, I agree with you. Outright. <laughs> I feel that way. Okay, you're all allowed to be wrong. Pick number two of Parkins' picks. I think we're all in agreement on this one. Cowboys rush defense cannot stop Detroit. Yeah. We've yeah. talked about it a lot today. This game, I mean. Fast track in Dallas, no home field advantage. Lions rushing attack with Gibbs and Montgomery and their offensive line is going to have a 200-yard rushing game against Dallas. Love Detroit, minus three. We do not need to spend a lot of time on that. And then I will go to primetime Sunday night football. The oh. Giants, oh. Giants, oh. Giants oh. catching points, plus three against the Cincinnati Bengals. Listen, I'm as surprised as anyone that this was going to be my pick. But can I show you <laughs> what Daniel Jones yeah. has done Talk to since him, week two? <laughs> since Daniel. week two, top ten in yards, touchdowns, interceptions, passer rating. And he's playing the Cincinnati Bengals who allow yards to guys who are like me. Yeah. Daniel Jones is better than me. I'm with Greg Jennings. Give me ben the Giants. The real, point the real number home. eight stands up. That is going to end in up being a four-no week with last night. I'm 10 and seven. I'll talk to you guys on Monday when I'm 13 and seven against the spread because I'm seeing the board clearly. I, look. The, okay, Dan. Okay. He's saying. I mean, Nick Wright has no chance putting, against me. This putting time. your reputation on the New York Giants is ballsy, so I like it. I'll take the and what these guys just said uh, behind your back is also accurate. 
the New York Giants quarterback might be better than the New York Jets quarterback hey, right now. Not, not Mike. Not Mike. He yeah. is better right now. Is he better? He's, right now he's <laughs> better. better. Right yeah. now he's better. Yes. Right now he's better. Hey there, thank you so much for watching Breakfast Ball. You know, you can subscribe right here to get all the latest bits and segments from our show. And hey, while you're at it, make sure to check out all the amazing content from all the other shows also right here on FS1.